Hello, this is Adam Eyed with Vocabulary in Reading, Summer 2020, and this is the installation and maintenance video. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, and it seems complicated, but after you get everything installed, it's really actually pretty simple. What you want to do first is download the final deliverable zip folder that your professor will give you, and create your own repository with it. The first thing we will install is MySQL Community Edition. You'll find yourself on a page like this, and you can just use the MySQL web version. It's the smaller install, the smaller download. And that works just fine. When you install, you'll want to make an account with the credentials username root and password root. So now to set up the correct configuration on your machine, You'll enter these lines basically exactly as you see them. MySQL U root P, and then it'll prompt you for a password. You'll enter root. You'll create a schema VIR. I can't do that right now because I already have one, so it won't work. And you'll press exit to leave the command line interface. Now you'll open command prompt in this directory here. Backend source main resources. And then just open the window here. And you'll put these lines in exactly as you see them. This. It'll prompt you for the password, which is root. And it'll work. See, mine already exists, so it didn't work for me, but it will work for you. Now we're going to install the dependencies, and we will start with the front end folder. You need to install Node and NPM, but these days uh, Node.js comes with NPM, so Google Node, and you'll find yourself here, and there you go. Once you have that installed, you can go to the front end folder and do NPM install, NPM start, and then npm run build. Um, if any of these fail, try running this command here, npm install dash g angular cli, and that's what worked for us. Once you do this, you can see the front end of the website running at localhost 4200. Um, the front end is basically done though, so there's not a lot of times when you're going to have to use this. Now we're going to go to where you'll be doing most of your work in the back end. You're going to need Java and Tesseract. Java, I can imagine you know how to install. Tesseract, you can click on this link here, follow the instructions for your system, and you're going to end up at a page like this. I have Windows, so I use the Windows installer, and it's very easy, very simple. Once Tesseract is installed, you're going to want to create these two environment variables um, for me and my whole team. The Tesseract installation directory ended up having these two locations be the same, so this is what my variables look like. Um, it's possible that this will change by the time the next team is installing, so just make sure you follow these steps and you'll be fine. The other environment variables you'll, ne you'll need to make is the prod variable. You can just set that to zero. The app encryption password, which you'll have to get on the password file from your project owner, so make sure you ask for that. And then we're keeping this mention of the SendGrid API key here. But it has been lost for many semesters, and we cannot access it. And we also can't even find a reason for it to exist. So you'll be able to ignore this. Uh, and you can ignore a lot of the mentions of it in the code. We left it there just in case we were missing something. But we really don't think this is needed for anything. So once you have all of these environment variables set, you can run mvnw build in the backend folder and 
You'll sh you should get a build success. It will take a while though, the first time. Now we have the front end and back end dependencies done, so we can go back to the code folder. And we can run virs.cmd or sh if you're not on Windows. Install only. This again, especially the first time, will take quite a while. So I'm going to skip ahead. You'll get these success messages and then you'll know that you're good to go on running it locally. So we'll do virs.cmd run and then you'll be able to navigate to you'll see at the end here but it's localhost 8080 and once this is done this will be live here this will be able to do everything that your live version will do upload documents upload text PDFs and images. One difference though is that when you upload something, the word categories that this is pulling from are the words that you put into your uh, local MySQL database. That's basically just to test that it's working. The word categories on the live version will be different, so if these are categorized differently for you, that's why. Now for the production build, you'll want to make sure that in the backend folder you have a bundle and release folder. Um, these should be there because the bundle actually has some important stuff in it. Um, but make sure that they're there or else the production build won't work and then you'll go back to the code folder virs.cmd prod build and it'll go through this whole process it'll run all the tests which will take a while and then once it's done it will put the zip folder zip file into the release folder and this project is running on AWS Elastic Beanstalk, which is super easy once you have this bundle zip file. You'll head over to AWS Management Console. You can go to Elastic Beanstalk it, the first time you log in here. That won't, uh, that won't be on the fast menu, so you just search Elastic Beanstalk. And this is the only thing running on this account, so you'll see this, the health should be okay. Click on it. Now here is where you'll do all of your changes. Super easy. You'll upload and deploy. Choose file. You'll find the file that you just made in the release folder. Uh, you'll deploy it. It'll take a long time to upload. If something is bad or something is wrong it will go roll back automatically to the working version and at the beginning of a new deploy the health will say critical and just wait like five minutes and it'll all go back to normal and the last thing I want to mention is there are a lot of unit tests that do not work we tried to fix a lot of them but we discovered they weren't working very late in the process. So most of the tests right now in the backend source test folder have the ignore annotation on them. You can see, see here. If you're trying to get them to work, You'll have to go through and get rid of all of these ignore annotations and then once you see what works and what doesn't work you can start debugging. A lot of them work um, but we went through and ignored them all before we turned in the project because we wanted to make sure that you guys could compile your project uh, 
right, right off the bat and get working and not have to, um, you know, go through hundreds of lines of errors before you can run the project. And that wraps up the installation and maintenance video. Thanks for watching.